Section eight of Confessions, volumes three and four. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Confessions, volumes three and four, by Jean Jacques Rousseau. Anonymously translated. Section eight. i was destined to be the outcast of every condition for notwithstanding m gatier gave the most favourable account he possibly could of my studies they plainly saw the improvement i received bore no proportion to the pains taken to instruct me which was no encouragement to continue them the bishop and superior therefore were disheartened and i was sent back to madame de varens as a subject not even fit to make a priest of but as they allowed at the same time that i was a tolerably good lad and far from being vicious this account counterbalanced the former and determined her not to abandon me i carried back in triumph the dear music-book which had been so useful to me the air of alpheus and arethusa being almost all i had learned at the seminary my predilection for this art started the idea of making a musician of me a convenient opportunity offered once a week at least she had a concert at her house and the music-master from the cathedral who directed this little band came frequently to see her this was a parisian named monsieur le maitre a good composer very lively gay young well made of little understanding but upon the whole a good sort of man madame de varens made us acquainted i attached myself to him and he seemed not displeased with me a pension was talked of and agreed on in short i went home with him and passed the winter the more agreeably at his chambers as they were not above twenty paces distant from madame de varens where we frequently supped together it may easily be supposed that this situation ever gay and singing with the musicians and children of the choir was more pleasing to me than the seminary and fathers of st lazarus this life though free was regular here i learned to prize independence but never to abuse it for six whole months i never once went out except to see madame de varens or to church nor had i any inclination to it this interval is one of those in which i enjoyed the greatest satisfaction and which i have ever recollected with pleasure among the various situations i have been placed in some were marked with such an idea of virtuous satisfaction that the bare remembrance affects me as if they were yet present i vividly recollect the time the place the persons and even the temperature of the air while the lively idea of a certain local impression peculiar to those times transports me back again to the very spot for example all that was repeated at our meetings all that was sung in the choir everything that passed there the beautiful and noble habits of the canons the chasubles of the priests the mitres of the singers the persons of the musicians an old lame carpenter who played the counter-bass a little fair abbe who performed on the violin 
the ragged cassock which m le maitre after taking off his sword used to put over his secular habit and the fine surplice with which he covered the rags of the former when he went to the choir the pride with which i held my little flute to my lips and seated myself in the orchestra to assist in a recitative which m le maitre had composed on purpose for me the good dinner that afterwards awaited us and the good appetites we carried to it this concourse of objects strongly retraced in my memory has charmed me a hundred times as much or perhaps more than ever the reality had done i have always preserved an affection for a certain air of the conditor alme siderum because one sunday in advent i heard that hymn sung on the steps of the cathedral according to the custom of that place as i lay in bed before daybreak mademoiselle merceret madame de varence's chambermaid knew something of music i shall never forget a little piece that m le maitre made me sing with her and which her mistress listened to with great satisfaction in a word every particular even down to the servant perrine whom the boys of the choir took such delight in teasing the remembrance of these times of happiness and innocence frequently returning to my mind both ravish and affect me i lived at annecy during a year without the least reproach giving universal satisfaction since my departure from turin i had been guilty of no folly committed none while under the eye of madame de varens she was my conductor and ever led me right my attachment for her became my only passion and what proves it was not a giddy one my heart and understanding were in unison it is true that a single sentiment absorbing all my faculties put me out of a capacity of learning even music but this was not my fault since to the strongest inclination i added the utmost assiduity i was attentive and thoughtful what could i do nothing was wanting towards my progress that depended on me meantime it only required a subject that might inspire me to occasion the commission of new follies that subject presented itself chance arranged it and as will be seen hereafter my inconsiderate head gave in to it one evening in the month of february when it was very cold being all sat round the fire we heard some one knock at the street door perrine took a light went down and opened it a young man entering came upstairs presented himself with an easy air and making m le maitre a short but well-turned compliment announced himself as a french musician constrained by the state of his finances to take this liberty the heart of the good le maitre leapt at the name of a french musician for he passionately loved both his country and profession he therefore offered the young traveller his service and use of his apartment which he appeared to stand much in need of and which he accepted without much ceremony i observed him while he was chatting and warming himself before supper he was short and thick having some fault in his shape though without any particular deformity he had if i may so express myself 
an appearance of being hunchbacked with flat shoulders and i think he limped he wore a black coat rather worn than old which hung in tatters a very fine but dirty shirt frayed ruffles a pair of splatterdashes so large that he could have put both legs into either of them and to secure himself from the snow a little hat only fit to be carried under his arm with this whimsical equipage he had however something elegant in his manners and conversation his countenance was expressive and agreeable and he spoke with facility if not with modesty in short everything about him bore the mark of a young debauchee who did not crave assistance like a beggar but as a thoughtless madcap he told us his name was venture de villeneuve that he came from paris had lost his way and seeming to forget that he had announced himself for a musician added that he was going to grenoble to see a relation that was a member of parliament during supper we talked of music on which subject he spoke well he knew all the great virtuosi all the celebrated works all the actors actresses pretty women and powerful lords in short nothing was mentioned but what he seemed thoroughly acquainted with though no sooner was any topic started than by some drollery which set every one a laughing he made them forget what had been said this was on a saturday the next day there was to be music at the cathedral monsieur le maitre asked if he would sing there very willingly what part would he choose the counter-tenor and immediately began speaking of other things before he went to church they offered him his part to peruse but he did not even look at it this gasconade surprised le maitre you'll see said he whispering to me that he does not know a single note i replied i am very much afraid of him i followed them into the church but was extremely uneasy and when they began my heart beat violently so much was i interested in his behalf i was presently out of pain he sung his two recitatives with all imaginable taste and judgment and what was yet more with a very agreeable voice i never enjoyed a more pleasing surprise after mass m venture received the highest compliments from the canons and musicians which he answered jokingly though with great grace M. le maitre embraced him heartily i did the same he saw i was rejoiced at his success and appeared pleased at my satisfaction it will easily be surmised that after having been delighted with m bacle who had little to attract my admiration i should be infatuated with m venture who had education wit talents and a knowledge of the world and might be called an agreeable rake this was exactly what happened and would i believe have happened to any other young man in my place especially supposing him possessed of better judgment to distinguish merit and more propensity to be engaged by it for venture doubtless possessed a considerable share and one in particular very rare at his age namely that of never being in haste to display his talents 
it is true he boasted of many things he did not understand but of those he knew which were very numerous he said nothing patiently waiting some occasion to display them which he then did with ease though without forwardness and thus gave them more effect as there was ever some intermission between the proofs of his various abilities it was impossible to conjecture whether he had ever discovered all his talents playful giddy inexhaustible seducing in conversation ever smiling but never laughing and repeating the rudest things in the most elegant manner even the most modest women were astonished at what they endured from him it was in vain for them to determine to be angry they could not assume the appearance of it it was extraordinary that with so many agreeable talents in a country where they are so well understood and so much admired he so long remained only a musician my attachment to m venture more reasonable in its cause was also less extravagant in its effects though more lively and durable than that i had conceived for m bacle i loved to see him to hear him all his actions appeared charming everything he said was an oracle to me but the enchantment did not extend far enough to disable me from quitting him i spoke of him with transport to madame de varens le maitre likewise spoke in his praise and she consented we should bring him to her house this interview did not succeed he thought her affected she found him a libertine and alarmed that i had formed such an ill acquaintance not only forbade me bringing him there again but likewise painted so strongly the danger i ran with this young man that i became a little more circumspect in giving in to the attachment and very happily both for my manners and wits we were soon separated monsieur le maitre like most of his profession loved good wine at table he was moderate but when busy in his closet he must drink his maid was so well acquainted with this humour that no sooner had he prepared his paper to compose and taken his violoncello than the bottle and glass arrived and was replenished from time to time thus without being ever absolutely intoxicated he was usually in a state of elevation this was really unfortunate for he had a good heart and was so playful that madame de varens used to call him the kitten unhappily he loved his profession laboured much and drank proportionately which injured his health and at length soured his temper sometimes he was gloomy and easily offended though incapable of rudeness or giving offence to any one for never did he utter a harsh word even to the boys of the choir on the other hand he would not suffer another to offend him which was but just the misfortune was having little understanding he did not properly discriminate and was often angry without cause. End of section eight. Recording by Martin Giessen in Hazelmere, Surrey.